もう普段からですね日本のように大きな We often tell the Japanese public that an economic giant like Japan must act more responsibly toward the global community. Nevertheless, we are still winning in local elections. The party still wins local elections because of the power of its old fashioned political machine. Here, Kato throws the muscle of his party behind Hiroshi Misawa, an LDP politician running for local office. Misawa couldn't ask for a better helping hand. By managing old myths and economic progress, the LDP has brought Japan remarkable stability. <laughs> But the deals made to stay in power have handcuffed the party to special interests and led to Japan Inc.'s biggest problem money politics. The enormous wealth of Japanese corporations has seduced the LDP into peddling more and more of its influence. Money is the cement. In this unholy alliance between Japanese big business and the ruling Liberal Democratic Party. In Japan, you need a lot because you're fighting not just the opposition politicians, you're fighting other factions within your party, and you're beholden to an awful lot of people. That's why otherwise respectable politicians will do appalling things. Corruption reached new heights when, in 1989, an influence peddling scandal involving Japan's Recruit Corporation implicated nearly every top LDP politician. People have nowhere to turn but to the LDP. Recently, we were faced with such highly emotional issues as a recruit scandal. It was as if the LDP was caught in a rain shower. Now the shower is over, the sun is out, and our body is dry. But in 1991, another shower struck Japan. The scandal took place here at Nomura Securities. <laughs> Nomura and three other brokerage firms confessed to giving more than $1.5 billion in rebates to corporate clients who lost money in the stock market. It turned out that the Ministry of Finance had known about the practice for years. But the ministry did nothing because of Nomura's key role as a fundraiser for Japanese companies. The scandal proved that Japan's system can promote business, but cannot regulate it. Yuriko Hase is a member of Japan's Social Democratic Party, the group that claims to oppose everything the ruling party represents. I entered the race as a representative of everyday people. I have been working for human rights and am very concerned about education and pollution. As a woman politician, I'm also working very hard to promote equality between men and women. Far from the rice country of the LDP, this is Hase's stomping ground the urban streets of Tokyo.
Here, voters are receptive to Hase's message that LDP policies have consciously favored corporations at the expense of working men and women. Since the war, the government, economy, and society in general have put all their energies into production. Now things are too expensive, and people don't understand why. Well, one reason is that the Japanese are too meek and just accept things as inevitable. We don't fight back, and we don't speak our feelings. Hase's message is strong, but her party is weak. Without access to corporate funding, some democratic socialists take secret handouts from the same sources as the ruling party which props up the opposition in order to control dissent. Late in 1991, the outspoken Hase learned the price of dissent. She was rebuked for breaking a rule against wearing hats in the parliament. Hase refused to remove her berets, which had become her personal signature. But instead of supporting her, her own party pressured her to back down for the sake of harmony. The beret episode was a minor incident, but it recalled an old Japanese saying, the nail that sticks up will be hammered down. Today, protests outside the political system are the most serious sign of dissent. These marchers are protesting a government plan to dam up Japan's last Whitewater River. Among many Japanese, there is growing fear that their quality of life is being sacrificed for the relentless drive toward economic growth. Why are we working so hard? People are beginning to question their mission in life. They feel like fools for working themselves to the point of exhaustion. We are just beginning to realize that we are, in fact, economic animals. This wasteland in the middle of Tokyo Bay is called Gomi no Shima. Garbage Island. It is the final resting place for products that cannot be sold, and it is a symbol of an economic machine that cannot stop itself. The problem is that, the, unfortunately, the machine itself keeps moving for the same purposes. And it's so strong and so established, and it's very hard to, to sort of destroy the machine and create a new machine for, in order to achieve the new target. That's the problem at the moment. And everybody knows we are going to the totally wrong direction, and, but we don't know how to stop it. Thirty years ago, Japan was a nation in turmoil. It chose then to leave its defense to the U.S. and to solve its domestic problems by building the most efficient economic machine in the world. Today, the Cold War is over, and Japan is an economic superpower. But with financial might comes political responsibility. Japan must emerge from the shadow of the United States and find a purpose for its newfound power. Today, Japan reckons with how to reinvent itself one more time.
Major funding for this program was provided by the Annenberg CPB Project and the Ford Foundation.